So our lovely last minute replacement, she is an abortion doula and clinic escort. She blogs at Feminace. She's amazing, please give her a warm welcome. She's doing this with very little notice because she loves Skepticon and she loves this movement. So here we are, Nikki Massey. Good morning, party people. Don't mind if I sit down, do you? Hey, how about that party, fun? I say we keep giving a hand for the organizers because that was freaking awesome. Okay, so you might see behind me that um, there's more than one name on this presentation. I usually do this with my partner in crime, Brianne Bilyeu, so this is my first time doing this solo. So here goes. Uh, Group of Justice, activism on the sidewalk. Where's my mouse? There we go. Um, and we're here to uh, talk about you know, clinic escorting. That's pretty much what I do now. I was training as a doula, but things happen. Things happen. Um, <laughs> and so now my focus is on clinic escorting and, edu and abortion education for the layman. I did a workshop a couple of days ago. Some of you were there. And um, I thought it went well. <laughs> so um, we're going to talk about things like terminology, why you should give a darn, um, whether you're an atheist or a believer, um, the type of people who protest and their motivations, uh, myths surrounding abortion, crappy arguments, how to get involved if you're, if you're interested in giving escorting a try, and how to help if you don't think it's right for you. And then, you know, if I have time, I might share a story or two from the sidewalk. They're usually good for a laugh. Or I can take questions. I say it just depends on my mood. Um, <laughs> I'm still recovering, too. <laughs> One moment, please. Ah, dehydration. Um, one of the things we are not, I am not here to do and will not be doing is... Um, I'm not gonna debate abor abortion for, as a right or a wrong. Um, I'm gonna discuss um, some arguments for and against abortion and bodily autonomy, uh, but mostly in the context of what is heard on the sidewalk. However, I'm not entertaining questions or arguments about the morality of abortion or the rights of people to have them because I am firmly on the side of bodily autonomy and people having the right to do with their bodies what they want and I don't think for, as far as I'm concerned, there is no debate. Either you believe in it or you don't. <laughs> so let's start off with some terminology. Um, we have some what they say and what we say on the, uh, it's also a very long list and it's all behind me, this is gonna be great. Um, yes, the first thing that they do, they love calling us death scorts because they think they're being clever. They're not. <laughs> Um, they love calling us pro-abort. Um, I argue that I am also pro-abortion in the same way that I'm pro-open heart surgery or pro, you know, knee replacement. It's a, you know, it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a medical procedure. It's not pretty. It's not nice, but it's necessary, like most other medical procedures when you need them. Um, they call they call themselves pro-life. We call them anti-abortion for about the same reason in reverse. They seem to care a lot about stopping abortion than, in some cases, the lives of people who work for clinics. As you can see, you know, there we've had recent attacks on reproductive um, reproductive clinics, which thankfully have not hurt anyone. But you know, still, the possibility is there. And um, the, 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 I say the wounds, uh, the, the wound that we all felt when, George, when Dr. Tiller was killed is still pretty raw in, in, in the community. Um, okay, so they call themselves sidewalk counselors. We call them protesters. They hate it when you call them protesters. They will correct me in a minute because we're, just, we're trying to counsel people to make the decision that we want them to make. And they call themselves counselors and they try to I don't know about you, I have a counselor and she has never like advertised by running into me on, on the sidewalk with a flyer and a picture of a gross fetus. <laughs> and um, of course, uh, they, they, they like to use ter uh, different terminologies for, 
for a fetus, um, baby, unborn child, preborn, which still confuses me. Um, <laughs> we like to use more accurate terms, zygote, embryo, fetus, unless the patient isn't like wants to call what what they're carrying a baby, then we go with what the patient wants because we're not we're not jerks. Um, they call themselves feminists. We call ourselves feminists. You. You figure out who's right. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, they're also very, um, they believe in that, in that gender binary. So every person who's walking, every woman who's walking in, any femme presenting person is a mother. Even if they're there just to get birth control, you are a mother. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, you are a mother and you must have that baby. And uh, pretty much uh, the last three are, when, when Brianne and I are doing this live, we go back and forth on this one. What they, uh, they say they're helping, we say it's harassment. They say they're preaching, we say it's harassment. We say they're praying, we say it's harassment. They say they're trying to save you, we call it. Thank you. <laughs> now, now you know the terminology, why should you care? I can't believe I have to say, I have to re read these lines because you should care. But I'm going to be nice and explain why. Um, atheists, free thinkers, and non believers, you see, um, we believe that abortion is a humanist cause. And there's this great, um, great write up by the British Humanist Association, and I'm going to read a few tenets there. Um, there is not one correct humanist view on, on abortion. Um, humanists value happiness and personal choice. Humanists value life, but do not think that all life is sacred or believe in the concept of ensoulment and at relation or otherwise. Because humanists take happiness and suffering as foremost moral considerations, words, I know them, um, quality of life will often trump the preservation of life, especially if those two come into conflict. Um, and, uh, and pretty much uh, these arguments are first and foremost religiously motivated, the ones against abortion. They are... They're pretty much based on Jesus doesn't like it. We do have secular pro-life uh, pro people, but it's pretty much the same argument with Jesus filed off of it. It confuses me. Um, uh, there, and there are actually some, it also varies in, most, in some religious groups. Um, Hinduism, uh, they don't believe, uh, uh, it's no abortion except if the life of the mother is at risk. It violates the principle, that violates the principle of nonviolence. Um, Lutheran church, for example, is nope with the exception of the life of the mother. Same with the a Baptist, um, Baptist Convention. Um, um, sorry, with the Southern Baptist Convention. Sorry, the words are small. Um, and you know, a, a few others uh, will actually allow it. They're a little shamey about it. Uh, the American Baptist churches, Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, uh, some sects of Islam, um, the United Methodist Church, and then there are the religious tenets who are just outright supportive, Judaism, university, Unitarian universal, Universalist, bleh. Uh, I, can't, I can't word today, y'all. Uh, and the United Church of Christ. Um, now we're gonna talk about who protests. Just this very next slide is focused, mostly, is focused on the um, people who attack us here in, um, up in Minnesota, but they, some, of these, some of these organizations are are national, so you can find them everywhere growing like kudzu. Um, first up is, uh, <laughs> or the, well, actually kudzu works, so they do kind of grow and you kind of can't stop them and not even fire will make them go away. And <laughs> so this is, um, I'm actually very, very ashamed that I cannot remember what MCCL actually stands for. We don't have it in the notes. Um, but these are our political, legislative, and they're actually Minnesota focused because I know what that M stands for Minnesota. Um, they're more, um, they're more about education. They run some of the crisis pregnancy centers in, um, up in the states. They're against euthanasia, human cloning, use of stem cells. They're a big legislative powerhouse, pretty much. Um, then there's uh, pro-life across America. Or you know, or or pro life, uh, pro life action Minnesota. Those are pretty, those are where most of our as um, most of our protesters come from. They're a Catholic organization. They do the protesting, the sidewalk counseling. They confront doctors who do abortions, and they are obnoxious. 
Um, then we have Pro-Life Across America. Some of you have probably have seen some of these large billboards that say things like, my heart start, started beating at three weeks, or I'm a natural redhead. You can determine my hair color at conception. And they have these adorable babies on these things, and they all have arguments that end with me going, so? Uh, those are usually run by Pro-Life Across America. Um, now we have uh, AHA, that's the weird, sorry, the weird A thing with an A upside down that looks confusing and hideous. Um, these, this group is terrifying, to say the least. Um, these are the ones that have the very big graphic fetus signs that say things like, they don't want you to see this, or the body inside of your body is not your body. And it's, they guilt women from going to clinics, they call them murderers, they, they don't want exceptions for rape or murder, they have no sense of decency, they're tactless, they're awful. Um, I was just reading this morning all of the reports from, from various escorts, because we have a private Facebook place where we can chat and rant and compare notes. And apparently one of our AHA guys from, I forget where this escort is from, was literally like making stale fish vagina jokes every time she walked by and was calling her a whore in Italian like she wouldn't understand, like she wouldn't understand what putana meant. I mean, the AHA, they are just, they are the worst. Let's see. Now, um, who protests? We get individual churches, we get individuals, and then we get people who represent crisis pregnancy centers. Now, for those who don't know what crisis pregnancy centers are, they are um, fake, you, you, they are fake clinics whose entire purpose is to prevent anyone walking in from deciding to have an abortion. Occasionally, um, they will have like an ultrasound machine where they'll show you, and then they'll pretty much counsel you a lot about um, why you shouldn't have an abortion. There are usually no actual medical people there. And in California, they're having fits because a recent law has been passed saying that they have to actually tell the truth about them not being an actual medical clinic thing, which is wonderful to me, I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> now, the motivations of these protesters are, are, are different, other than to annoy me on a Saturday morning. Um, they have this savior complex. You know, they have to save every soul, even the unborn. Um, people, um, and then some are guilt, people who have been touched personally by an abortion. They've had one and regretted it. They are, um, they're, a male, they're a male partner who's, who, who's, whose partner had, had an abortion and they hate it and I regret my lost fatherhood. And some are based on control, just patriarchal, embedded sense of entitlement. These are the same people who, no matter how many times you say no, they will continue be coming at you, coming at you. You're not angry because of me. You're angry because you're here. All that bullshit. Um, <clears throat> and there's, you know, sometimes you, you're not really sure. Um, the sincerity versus self-righteousness, maybe it's a combination of both. I try not to think about it too much because I don't care why you're out there. You're annoying people. You're upsetting people. Some of these pictures you see here um, are actually ones that we have taken from, our, from our, our clinic, Whole Women's Health, in downtown Minneapolis. Uh, the gentleman who's standing with the Bible, he proceeded to point at us, not any of the patients, and, and gave probably the most boring Bible study I've ever heard in my life. And I, I mean, he was even asking questions that we were promptly ignoring, trying to like, do you understand this bit? And we're just, who are you? <laughs> and we have you know, you know, people holding signs. Sometimes they bring children, which always breaks my heart when you bring kids into this and they're holding these signs and they're, you know, sometimes we get the lily white family with the one adopted black child who is, just, and you know, you just, my heart breaks because for all I see is like, here's my trophy child that I saved. I can save your trophy child. I can save your child too and have another trophy. And oh boy. Um, <laughs> so a quick, I, I did, again, I did a, a workshop on abortion myths and blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna make this sucker pretty quick. Um, what abortion is and is not. Myths are that all abortions, 
all fetuses that 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 um, go through abortion are fully aware, fully formed, able to feel pain. The majority of abortions are done in the first trimester, where none of that is true. I mean, they they I mean, there's arms, there's legs, but you know, brain, heart, lungs, all that is still growing, so they're they can't really feel pain. Um, they're not ripped apart while still alive either. Uh, partial birth abortions are more of a more of a uh, pro pro lifer way of, of saying third trimester abortions that sounds even worse in the worst possible way. And it's it's if you end up having needing a third trimester abortion, you are probably in a very bad shape, and you probably have a wanted pregnancy that something terrible has happened to either you or the fetus. So to demonize people who, who have this procedure is just monstrous to me. And the, the funniest myth to me is that this is a money-making scheme. They're doing this for the money. They're getting paid every time they get an abortion. To which I say, well, my dentist gets paid every time he does a cleaning. Is that a conspiracy? <laughs> and they're like, oh, you're getting paid too. And I'm like, I'm a volunteer. If I'm getting paid for sitting out there in eight degree, when it's eight degrees and snowing, where's my check? <laughs> Seriously. And next up is a lovely bingo card of stuff protesters say. We went, we had this adjusted to go to do to a to present at a UU church, so it used to say shit protesters say, and I'm not going to go through all of them because time. But um, you, you can probably um, con confer from some of the, some of the, don't look away, the microphone's here. Um, <laughs> from some of the pictures, there's, you know, the dollar sign for money, there's, you know, the, the holy book, the swastika, because you're like the Nazis marching the Jews into the death camps. Whew, thank goodness I'm not allowed to say anything back to them. Um, <laughs> Um, they actually say that sidewalk counseling actually works. They love to claim that, you know, we've saved so many babies, but it always seems that they're counting people who walk out, no matter for what reason. Maybe they just picked up their pills. Maybe they picked up their birth control. Maybe they didn't have the money. Maybe they didn't have an ID. Maybe they did change their mind, but it had nothing to do with what they, what they had to say. Go figure. Uh, yeah, the abortion industry, making money, P women who have abortions are selfish. There's just a lot of crap, they say. And we get this, um, this great bingo card from everysaturdaymorning.net, which is another great um, site where the clinic escorts, I believe in Louisville, who are beleaguered, worse than we are, um, they tell stories about you know bad behavior by protesters. So... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Now you've heard me you know, babble about this for a few minutes, you're probably wondering, how do I get involved? Well, it's actually not, it's actually not that hard. Um, Planned Parenthood has an excellent uh, volunteer program. You call, you say, I wanna do this, and they even have training. But you know, you look, look beyond Planned Parenthood. It is not the only game in town, just the biggest. There are also local, um, smaller, smaller chains, um, smaller offices that are sometimes beleaguered and could use help. Again, I'm with Whole Women's Health. It's a very small chain. They have a few and we have one in Minneapolis and they just opened one in New Mexico. They're fighting to stay open in Texas because it's Texas. <laughs> and again, this is also a very Minnesota focused because so we have Dr. Dr. Hansen and, um, and the, Red River, uh, the Red River Women's Clinic. Ooh, a spatula, spatula. <laughs> I should have actually done things here. Um, how I got involved, um, it was through my partner in crime, Brienne, who, who blogs at, um, at, at um, Free Thought Blogs, and liked to talk and liked and, and talked a lot about her experiences there. And you know, I just, hey, I'm here. I have time, thanks to no, not being able to work. I can at least give one Saturday. At least I can do that. So I jumped on. I jumped on the horse, and they showed. I showed up one day, and kept coming back. So you know, it's not. It's not too bad of a gig. Uh, Louisville also gives us um, some points of unity that we like to use when we talk about how to escort. Um, escorts must gain consent from every client every time. 
Uh, do you want me to walk with you? Um, are you okay? Can I walk you to the elevator because we're in another building? Um, and again, are you okay? We get permission. We don't touch without permission and all that consent, lovely stuff. Um, <laughs> um, we are present to support people and create space. Our goal is always to de-escalate the, the situation. If a, if a protester is all up in their face and they're getting upset, it's our job to step in and calm things down and try to just, just get the patient into the building. Um, we, um, our, our interactions with um, anti-choice protesters should be respectful, should be purposeful, focused, and calm. Did I say respectful? Throw that out the window, never said it, cut. Because um, we, um, our particular clinic, the rule is do not engage. Because it's like talking to a wall while banging your head against a wall, and the wall's, the wall's full of spikes. And it also distracts from, from our actual job, which is deal with the patient, be with the patient, be there for the patient. And I'm not gonna read all of these because time, but they're very, um, we, and they're very, you know, very good things to keep in mind that your job is to be there for the patient, period. That is it. You're not there to counter protest. That's a completely different sack of potatoes. And some, and some escorts have you know, different opinions about it. Personally, I'm like, please don't try to counter protest during clinic hours. You're just gonna confuse the, confuse the patients. Um, other things about clinic escorting, very important. Um, we have this policy, we have the policy of non-engagement. You're gonna be out in all kinds of weather, rain, snow, really hot days, because the clinic is gonna be open during all those times. And then we talked, because when we, when, we when we put this together, it was back in January, so buffer zones were a big deal. Um, what they are are a determined, a determined area by which the protesters cannot approach patients. And I know there was a Supreme Court decision that, you know, that abolished the ones in Boston, and they're trying to work on how to work around that. And um, this is what... It looked like before then, <laughs> this, uh, the space right in the middle, they could not approach, but they could protest and yell and pray and whatever all they want. And more about that. Um, and I just talked about the, 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 the case, here's what it's called, McCullen versus Coakley. Um, we at, um, at Whole Women's Health, we used, pro we used the property lines and trespassing laws to keep them from entering the building. And you would think that would be a simple, simple little rule. This is the line, do not cross it. You would think, but that would require not having a sense of entitlement that says the moment the protester turns her back, you can totally cross over and try to talk to someone. It has happened multiple times. Um, you have to keep in mind your own personal safety um, while protecting the patient, you know, try not to get into a fight <laughs> and, um, and here's the hard, uh, the hard part about when people ask, how do you put up with this? Why can't, you know, people can, can just call the police. Um, sometimes you have to know when to let things slide because cops aren't always supportive. Surprise! Um, uh, sometimes they don't care. Sometimes they don't like being called over and over again because so-and-so would keep, keep stepping over the property line and, you know, we can't do anything, they, they just don't, sometimes they just don't care, so we have to let some shit slide. And when um, a patient has a doctor's appointment, they don't have time to stop, call the cops, file a report, have their name in a record, because they have an appointment to get to. Whew. And you know, it, it, what really does help is um, having good relations with the security, with the on, in building security. This is myself, Brienne, and our Mark. He's, our, um, he's the security person in our building. He is on our side. He is equally frustrated by the antics of, uh, of the antis, though he's a good, you know, he's not bad for a good Christian man, and we love him. Everybody ought to have a Mark. Now, um, don't forget, you know, this is good, hard work. Um, remember your self-care. I like to go home and have a nap. It's exhausting work sometimes, even on slow days, because you have to deal with just their very presence sucks all the energy out. So I'm like, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have to get up at six o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. 
I am hating you with my eyes. <laughs> so um, how you tell that you know, it's a good fit because it's sure as heck not for everyone. Um, can you handle physical and psychological intimidation threats? If a protester gets all up in your face, can you handle it? Um, you have to have tons and tons of patience dealing with hearing nonsense. Uh, are you, you know, it's, it's helpful to not be prone to outbursts of anger. And um, remember that you're not there for, um, you're not there to counter protest. Just remember that. Um, you should be able to speak calmly with the patients. And are you at least a morning person or able to function after your first cup of coffee? That's important. <laughs> and um, we're going to kind of wrap this up here with um, how to support reproductive Dutch reproductive justice without without clinic escorting. If this if you if you are certain it is your thing, personally I think anyone can do it because you have to deal with people you don't disagree with all the time. It's called having a job, <laughs> and if you can do this without you know, popping off your boss, your, your racist boss, then you can. I believe everyone can do it. But if you if you're sure you can't, um, challenge your preconceptions. If you're what I, what I called Friday a pro-choice but, you know, not too many, or she has to be really regretful, or blah, blah, blah. Um, challenge that. Why, why are you making that exception? Um, you can also offer financial support to, to abortion funds or to actual clinics, um, participate in fundraising. I am hopping like crazy. Um, uh, volunteer at clinics in other ways. They always need filing help. Planned Parenthood has phone, has phone lines, banks you can volunteer for. Um, have conversations with friends and family, challenge their beliefs. Um, if, you ha if you've had an abortion, consider sharing your story and um, provide an unconditionally supportive environment for friends who are dealing with these decisions. I believe those are all very helpful ways that you can do things without, without getting out in front of, in front of people. Um, it, but, you know, if you think you can, I recommend it. It is a very, for me, it's a very fulfilling experience knowing that I'm helping people. They, people say thank you, but, and they, they'd say, hey, you're super brave for doing this, but to me, it doesn't feel that way. It just feels like something a decent person does. Thank you. <laughs>